reporting for Katie Chats here at the Gladstone Hotel for AfroFest in downtown Toronto with musician Jack Obacco. How does it feel to be here and performing at AfroFest? But you see, AfroFest is the best because, you know, I was born in Africa and in North America is the biggest African music festival. So it's like something very great, you know. And right now is the 25th anniversary of AfroFest. It's been something very nice because the beauty about this is to bring African music here and make the Westerner, uh, you know, discover the real African music, what it's all about. And this is great, you know. Tell me a little bit about some of your early influences musically growing up in Cameroon. <laughs> you see, Cameroon, we have at minimum 300 different ethnic groups, which means that the music is very, uh, how can I say it? I don't know how to say it in English, diverse. So we have a lot of beautiful music in Cameroon. That's why you see they, they call Cameroon the African miniature. Because we have a lot of diversity. Then the music is very complex and very sweet, different from village to village, you know. So I grew in that background. My mother was a musician. My grandmother was a musician. So for me, I grew with that. So being here and celebrating music all the time, I think I thank God, you know. <laughs> And you've done so many different things. You're a musician, a choreographer, an educator, the list goes on and on. How has it been transitioning from one thing to another throughout your amazing career? But I think it's just uh, it's the beauty of it, you know, because uh, the spirit of life and the art, God makes you artists. You know, it's not something, you, just, you can't just stand up and say I'm an artist. You know, when you become artist, it means you start to open your mind and become more creative. So you have to do different things. Because you see, I do a lot of things because I know uh, I work with kids. So if the school want me to just come and teach dance to the kid, I will go and teach dance. If they want me to just come and play drum, I will go and play drums. If they want me to just go and tell story, I will tell story. If they want me to just go and make instrument with them, I will go and make instrument. So I have to open like that. Uh, because when you go in the store, they don't sell only one product. No. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I mean? Yeah. If they sell only one product, they, they can't open. So you become like that. So you know that in different angles, you have things to offer. And you work with a charity raising money for an Ecole, a school in Cameroon. Can you tell me a little bit more about the school and why it's so close to your heart? That's a... Uh, uh, I said today, even for my kid, if I die today, it's no problem. I achieve all the dream I have in life is to have kids, marry, have kids, you know, and help others. You know, I always do that, but this is time I did it the right way I want to do it. Because this school is in my head for a long time to rebuild it. But things go too wrong all the time. But this time we nail it. Actually, I will give like uh, the honor for all this to my wife, you know, Valerie, because she's like the real engine behind all this. You see what I mean? So I mean like, in the school, I attend this school when I was a kid. So when I went back, I see that the school was falling in different areas. You know, I feel sad, I feel pain. I say, no, you know, we can't, we can't leave the children like this because to, tomorrow is based on education. Without education, tomorrow is not life for children. So I said to my wife, look at this in my school, you know, when we go back, we have to try to do something. I play for all the foundation here in Canada. I don't know foundation I didn't play with here in Canada. You know, David, uh, Suzuki, everybody I play with. So I said, it's time for me to also start direct. If it is a little bit like this year, back there is big. You see what I mean? So this school, I attend this school, so like right now I'm proud. Because before we have uh, 212 kids, now it's 375. You know, they have new toilet, they have brand new school, jersey for soccer, uh, uh, music instruments, and we pay teachers to come and teach them three times a week from here. We pay the salary from here, like the oldest people of the village. Because you see like back home, Sometimes the children learn on their own, but like now we want. I want to change that. I want the the senior to come 
and give the knowledge that God gave them, transmit it to the kid. And now it's working, you know, and I think like... <laughs> Thank God. And tell me a little bit as well about this beautiful outfit that you're wearing today. Yeah, uh, exactly. That's when all these things start. I was in Africa for in eight countries promoting uh, one of my albums to all the countries in radios and TV. So I, I stopped in Senegal. I was in eight countries. Then I get this in Dakar. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And where is the best place to find out more information on you and your music and your wonderful work with the school online? Yeah, the children, you should go to TV Kid. I have beautiful video there with Mamayama, you know, <laughs> so it's very nice. So you can get me on, on my website, justjacobaco.com, you'll get things, you know. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It was a pleasure meeting you and have an amazing time here at AfroFest. Oh, thank you. Also, everybody out here in Toronto, yeah. or even though if you are down there in Japan, in Europe, in Africa, come down, okay. July 6 and 7, AfroFest, and we will be playing on the 7 at between 5 and 6. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you so much again. Thanks. <laughs> I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats here at the Gladstone Hotel at AfroFest in downtown Toronto.